Do you know that Bitcoin will not be a security even if Satoshi had sold it? By the way, Pro XRP attorney John Deaton has requested permission to file an amicus brief on behalf of XRP holders in the lawsuit between Zakanov versus Ripple. Finally, do you know you can now pay for goods across over 90 million stores globally using XRP? Stick with me to the end to learn more. If this sounds like something of much interest to you, be sure to check out this new video starting now. Hello everyone and welcome to our channel, where we talk about the latest updates on XRP and the cryptocurrency world in general. If this is your first time watching one of our videos, we happily send you a special welcome. We invite you to hit on the notification bell so you never miss another video. We are announcing that this channel has a giveaway of 200 XRP. To stand the chance of participating, all you have to do is simply subscribe to the channel, like this video and comment with the hashtag XRP, and the winner will be announced on the 15th of February. The XRP price could be close to the end of its short-term correction. Whether it bounces at the support line of the current pattern will determine if the correction is complete. There are no recent Ripple news regarding the Ripple vs. SEC lawsuit, and the price has lost an important horizontal level. However, Ripple Labs tweeted their 2023 crypto and blockchain predictions. In it, they have a positive outlook for non-fungible tokens, NFTs, central bank digital currencies, and financial institutions' investment in crypto. The XRP price has traded inside a symmetrical triangle since June 2022. Both the resistance and support lines have been validated numerous times. The price recently created a massive bullish hammer candlestick on January 2nd, initiating the current upward movement. Despite the increase in movement above the 38 cents area, the XRP price failed to break out from the triangle. Rather, it was consistently rejected for a period of nearly one month. Now, the price decreased below the 38 cents area once more. Moreover, this caused the daily RSI to drop below 50, another bearish sign. Due to the numerous times the digital asset has moved above and below this level, the area cannot confidently be used as support or resistance anymore. Whether the ripple price breaks out or down from the triangle can determine the future price trend's direction. A breakout could take the XRP token toward 50 cents while a breakdown could take it toward its 2021 lows at 30 cents. On the other hand, crypto law founder and XRP holder's attorney, John Deaton, believes that even if the pseudonymous Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto had sold BTC earlier on, it would not mean Bitcoin is a security. Deaton explains that in an investment contract, the underlying asset is not a security. He explains what he meant, if Satoshi would have sold some of his first Bitcoin and the buyer didn't do any mining himself but just sat back and waited for the price to go up, it meets the Howey test. However, it appears that Satoshi never sold any of his Bitcoin, so this was not the case. Except for the 10 Bitcoin sent to Alfini in 2009, not a single Bitcoin has ever been removed from any of the Bitcoin wallets since they were initially created, presumably by Satoshi Nakamoto. In the early days of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto accumulated a sizable number of Bitcoin by mining. According to the widely cited estimate, he mined about 1.1 million Bitcoin. John Deaton expressed his displeasure with the narrative being pushed by SEC Chairman Gary Gensler and some key figures in the crypto space that some tokens were securities. He cited MicroStrategy Chairman Michael Saylor, who discussed some tokens that fit into the securities classification in an interview. Deaton criticized Saylor and pointed out that XRP is software code. Even if Ripple sold XRP in an unregistered securities offering, it doesn't mean XRP is a security. Deaton claims that, when taken individually, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP and other cryptocurrencies are nothing more than alphanumeric sequences, digital codes, or software codes. He went on to say, the token itself is not a security. A token, like any other asset or commodity can be packaged, marketed, offered and sold as an investment contract. The amicus brief attorney Deaton intends to file supports Ripple's opposition to the plaintiff's motion for class certification. Earlier this week, Prominent U.S. defense lawyer James K. Fillon informed the XRP community that Deaton plans to challenge the assertion made by the plaintiff, claiming that Ripple offered unregistered security in the form of XRP. The lead plaintiff, named Vladi Zakhanov, asked the court to certify a class of all XRP holders who bought the token, including those who have sold XRP and those holding at a loss. 
According to Fillon, the proposed class includes all XRP holders, including the 75,890 XRP holders who hold a different view from the claimants and have also filed an amicus brief against the SEC in a similar case. Furthermore, the class would encompass direct Ripple sales of XRP, secondary market transactions of the token, and sales in countries where XRP is deemed a non-security. Following the assertions, Attorney Deaton, alongside 75,890 XRP holders and other XRP proponents like Spend the Bits, is requesting permission to file an amicus brief challenging the endorsement of the class. While the plaintiff opposes the request to file an amicus brief in the case, Ripple supports the move. According to Deaton, the plaintiff's opposition to the request demonstrates that the interest of over 75k XRP holders will not be pursued and protected in the suit. Attorney Deaton said the plaintiff's motion for class certification threatens to cause significant harm to XRP holders. In addition, the proposed Amici argue that the plaintiff does not adequately represent the interest of all XRP holders, especially the 75,890 known XRP holders. The motion noted that the lead plaintiff is not an actual XRP holder but a day trader who speculates on the daily price movement of diverse crypto assets, including XRP. Unlike the lead plaintiff, who held XRP for less than two weeks, proposed Amici and the tens of thousands of other XRP holders they represent are longtime users and holders of the digital asset XRP, an excerpt of the brief read. Furthermore, Flare Networks has disclosed that users can claim the first of the 36 months Flare drops on March 17th. The team made this known in a tweet on Friday, offering more details in an attached guide. It comes following the passing of the first Flare improvement proposal. Notably, the proposal sought to adjust the FLR tokenomics, particularly regarding the 28 billion tokens earmarked as airdrops to XRP holders at the time of a screenshot in December 2020. Instead of distributing the tokens directly over 36 months with no further action required after the initial 15% token distribution event, the project now intends to distribute them to all holders of wrapped FLR tokens, making them more akin to staking rewards. FIP.01 passed with 93% of voters in favor out of a 17% voting power turnout. Consequently, for the guide released on Friday, the team will release an installment of the drop every 30 days for the next 36 months to all WFLR holders. Flare Networks reveals that recipients must claim the airdrop tokens manually in 90 days or risk losing them forever through a coin burning process. Flare will calculate user rewards from a record of their WFLR balance from three random blocks 23 days before the distribution as a percentage of the WFLR in circulation. So a user holding 5% of the WFLR in circulation will receive 5% of the drop, as explained in the guide. Flare Networks, in recent weeks, has received criticism from Ripple Chief Technology Officer David Schwartz and other members of the XRP community over the new FLR holding rules. Some users have also accused the team of influencing the vote on FIP.01. Now down to XRP's most current development. Please, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that notification bell to be the first person to get more updates about the latest happenings as regards to XRP. Bit2Me, a cryptocurrency exchange located in Spain, has launched a new MasterCard debit card to enable users to purchase goods using XRP. According to a recent announcement, the Bit2Me card, which works on the MasterCard network, enables people to make payments using XRP across more than 90 million stores worldwide. Aside from a physical card, the Bit2Me card is also available virtually, thus allowing users to pay for goods via their smartphones and smartwatches, the announcement added. For the announcement, users will be rewarded with a 9% cashback whenever they pay for goods using the card online or in-store. Bit2Me noted that the 9% will be distributed in a magnitude of different cryptocurrencies. It is noteworthy that the card supports seven other cryptocurrencies aside from XRP. The debit card also allows users to make cash withdrawals at any ATM where MasterCard is supported. Notably, the card comes with a functional app where users can conveniently switch to any of the supported cryptocurrencies of their choice in order to make payments and cash withdrawals. Last year, cryptocurrency trading platform Uphold announced a 4% cashback reward for users of its debit cards. The firm noted that the cashback would be paid in XRP. So we come to the end of this video guys, if you enjoyed it, please make sure you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. This really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. 
Also, you can help enlighten others just like you have been enlightened by sharing this video to as many people as possible. Let's get this news everywhere guys. If you are a true cryptocurrency fan, don't miss any of our content. See you tomorrow to talk about the latest news that concerns us all as a community.